Hey everybody! In today's video, I am going to continue what I started last month with some tips for using layering stencils with your gel press plate. Last month, I showed just a simple use for layering stencils in the traditional way that you would pull prints on your gel press. But this month, I'm going to fine tune how you can get much more precise images using layering stencils in the gel press and your MISTI, as well as a common supply that everybody has. Once again, I'm using the splash inks. I love these inks. I will link these below the video and in my blog post. And I'm just applying the magenta ink to the gel press. Now I've marked these Altenew layering stencils so that I know where the top and the front is. This is very important. And I have taped a piece of cardstock to the edge of my MISTI. And this is what's going to help me get nearly perfect registration of these layering stencils, as perfect as you can. So you can see the first image, which I'm actually going to overprint with the ghost. I'm going to be doing this for all the samples today. I love the way this looks. It gives you almost a three-dimensional impression of the stencil. Now that pretty much cleaned my plate. So I'm going to come back with the blue splash ink. And I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera just a tiny bit. I'm standing up and so everything's sort of in a different place. Now you can see once again the dot in the upper right hand corner and I've also made a little sharpie dot on the base of my MISTI where I'm going to line up the bottom left corner of that stencil. That's another way to help you get the perfect registration. And because I've created this hinge at the top of the MISTI, the cardstock's in exactly the same place every time. Now again, I'm picking up the ghost after I remove the stencil on top of the print that I've already done. I can remove this and show you how perfectly aligned those beautiful dahlias are. Now I will repeat this process with different colors and a different stencil. Again, I'm just using scotch tape and aligning the top of the cardstock with the top of the MISTI with a piece of tape. This is such a fun and easy way to overprint, even if you're not using layering stencils, if you're just doing pure mono printing, but you want your impressions to be in the same place every time. The tape hinge for your paper is the most effective way to do that. Now I'm putting down a little bit of yellow and you can see I didn't really clean my brayer, which is 100% fine. That is the magic of gel printing. And I've marked these stencils as well. So again, lining it up with the Sharpie dot on the base of my MISTI as well as the grid in the base. I will pull a print from this layered kaleidoscope stencil. Both sets of these stencils are from Altenew. So you can see the first print I get, and then I'm going to go over it with the ghost print, just as I did in the first example, and give it that fun 3D look. Next, I will put down some magenta. I'm going for a very warm color scheme here. And these inks make the most beautiful brayer cleaning papers, I think. Over there on the right where you can see where I'm rolling off the excess ink, it's just so beautiful. I'm sure I will cut those up and use them on cards. Now once again, lining up the stencil in the correct orientation is the key. And I'll pull both the first print and the ghost print with the magenta to go on top of the yellow. Lift that up, and you can see those beautiful combinations, even with my dirty brayer, having just that little bit of blue in there to get a green and a little bit of purple turns out really, really beautifully. So, there is what I consider to be a pretty perfect layout of the layering kaleidoscope stencil. But because you know my philosophy that perfection is for serial killers, I'm also going to show you with the Dahlia stencil 
what it looks like if you do not align the stencils, but use the same technique to make sure that you have a hinge and that your paper is in the correct place. So I will take the layering stencil A and put it down on my MISTI and mark the little corner. These come off when you clean. It'll come off your stencils and it'll come off the base of the MISTI. And this time I attach the paper hinge to the bottom part of my MISTI, even though you can see I have another piece of paper ready to go at the top. That's another great thing about taping these to your MISTI because you can actually have three pieces of paper coming in from each side to get your ghost, pick up your ghost prints and pick up your initial registration with those multiple pieces of paper. I'm going to do the same thing, pick up the ghost here. Pull this print and give you a little bit of a peek, and that looks great. So now we will put the other stencil, which is incorrectly marked, because that happens sometimes when you don't take a second to actually line the stencils up themselves, just one behind another to make sure you have the design in the right place. So I was going to try a different color scheme here, but what I ended up getting was one that was rotated, even though it says top, and it turned out so beautifully that I'm putting it in the video to show you that not everything has to be perfect to be wonderful, including life, of course. So now I picked up just the negative spaces. I'm going to rub those a little bit more. Seems like up at the top I didn't really get in all the little nooks and crannies. And then remove this and do the layering stencil B as the ghost print, putting it on top of that print. And what I ended up with was these glowing blue lines where it was out of alignment. It was about 90 degrees rotated. The blue still shows through those beautiful boulder background flowers and ended up being one of my favorite prints. And you'll see the card right here after this beautiful, perfectly registered image on the gel press. Here is one of the kaleidoscope samples. And here is just the magenta kaleidoscope sample. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching.